peace to all of you. This is Pastor Nestor. I bring you once again our timely truth. And today we're just going to dwell on a very short scripture found in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Oh, by the way, I'm coming from Jesus is Lord Fellowship, Tom's River, here in New Jersey. This scripture takes us to Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. This is a very familiar and popular scripture to many of us. It says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. In the beginning of my walk with God, prayer was not something that I was attracted to. I was attracted to worship. I was attracted to fellowship. I was attracted to big events. Why? It's because there was no depthness in my walk with God. I have not discovered the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit. But then one day, as, as, as I began to mature, I began to learn and understand about the power of prayer. And so here Jesus Christ was saying, was sharing to his disciples that there are three categories of prayer. Of course, there are so many ways that you can expound prayer. But in this part of the scripture, he only said this three things. You ask, you seek, and you knock. So let's break it down and share the Word of God in a very practical way. The Word of God says, ask and it will be given to you. This is what I call the ordinary kind of prayer that we all pray. We ask, it's because here it is. We ask because God is complete and He is the provider of miracle. We also ask, it is because we're always on the needy side of life. As long as you're on earth, there will always be needs in your life, whether that's you're talking about spiritual, financial, uh, marital, relational, social, uh, or anything. Because in, in this world, we are all, we are incomplete. And there are certain times in our life that we seek the presence of God because we need something. So asking God is not a sin, but to be asking God constantly without going to the next level of your spiritual maturity is not good because when you're constantly asking, even in the natural, when you constantly ask people without uh, comprehending or who they are or investing in that relationship, it feels like and it looks like you're just taking advantage of people. So when you ask the Lord, well, yes, you ask with the right intention, right motives, right desires, and of course the... Uh, right appreciation of what you want from God. But that is not the only prayer that you need to pray. In other words, that is the basis of the basic aspect of prayer. We ask, it is because we need provision. So that's the first thing. We ask because we are in need of provision. And then Jesus Christ went on to say this, you seek and you will find. Now, Jesus Christ said this, when you ask, it's because you, there are certain provisions that you need. And when you seek, this is where he raised up the, the power and the, and, the, uh, and the revelation of the, of the, of, of the prayer. It says, ask and you will receive revelation. Now, when you begin to fall in love with Jesus, when you begin to fall in love with the Word of God, there's something that happens in your spirit and that is this. You begin to understand that you are not just a child of God, but you are a vessel of revelation. Your communion and your fellowship with the Holy Spirit impacts the way you look at yourself, you look at life, you look at others, you look at your eternity, you look at your daily life. Jesus said, ask and it will be given unto you. Provision will come. Seek and you will find and then revelation will come to you. And when you begin to operate in revelation, you begin to understand the concept of life, the context of life. Uh, you understand about the destiny of your life because these are all uh, inspired by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God begins to work in your spirit and then it reveals it into, He reveals it into your soul and then it just flows through your everyday life. And so you don't just dwell on the asking Raise up your prayer life and go to the place where, Lord, I seek your face. I seek your presence. I seek your revelation. I seek your knowledge. I seek your wisdom. This is not just about finances and material. There, there, is, a greater, there is a greater benefits when you know God. Because you know the word of God says, They that know their God shall do mighty exploits. The third one is what I call knock. Ask, seek, and knock. A-S-K, 
ASK. <laughs> so that's the, the, the acronym, ASK. And, and then it says here, knock and, and the door shall be, uh, and the door will be open. In other words, there are certain prayers where when you ask, it is given to you. Provision. When you seek, God begins to speak to you. Then there is this part of prayer which not many of not many enter into. It's called the the knocking prayer. This is the prayer uh, with uh, on the aspect of intercession when you plead in behalf of others, when you stand in behalf of others, when you intercede because of the needs of other people. In other words, this is probably the prayer that not only it answers the, 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 you know, the needs of other people, but it does impact you. You know, one thing I learned about prayer is this. When you pray and you begin to wait, 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 wait upon the Lord, and it seems like God is not answering your prayer, uh, do this kind of thinking. Maybe it's not about the prayer focus that God is interested in at the moment, but maybe the prayer focus is you. You know, when God changes the circumstance of people, He also changes the attitude of our hearts. And so when we are waiting upon the Lord, guess what? He's probably changing us from the inside. So when we knock, it is more about interceding about other people's needs, about the burdens and the crisis and the concerns of other people. And you know what happens when you begin to appreciate this prayer of intercession? You begin to understand something that not a lot of people will learn in this part of the world. And that is, when you pray and knock, you die to yourself. You die to your selfishness. You die to who you are. And guess who lives in you? Christ in me the hope of glory. And that's when you begin to appreciate the glory, the beauty, the character, and the passion of Jesus Christ. So let's all remember this. We ask as the first part of our prayer, because we need some provision, we seek it's because we need revelation from God. But not is, the, is what I call the sacrificial prayer. So let's do these three things every day. We ask, we seek, and we knock. And definitely, the God will answer us if we have the right intention, the right motives, and the right desire. Hey, listen, join us this coming Sunday to those of you that are here in local in New Jersey and the surrounding um, in the surrounding area of Tom's River. We have a service at 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock in person. Join us too. If you are watching this video from other places, join us at 1030 on in, online and uh, you can go to jilfnj.org and that is our website and also join us at uh, with uh, with our facebook jesus is lord fellowship tom's river or our youtube jesus is lord fellowship tom's river as well once again god bless you today is our timely truth and please be careful and let's enjoy the day but first of all but above all let's not forget jesus is the number one Savior and lover of our soul. God bless you all. Bye-bye.